let us understand the different provisions of contract of guarantee what do you mean by contract of guarantee what is it what are the different provisions what are the rules and regulations when it comes to contract of guarantee so first let's understand the meaning of guarantee right according to section 126 a contract of guarantee is a contract to perform the promise or discharge the liability of third person in case of his default so what we are trying to say it is a promise to to perform or to discharge the liability of third person it is something that i will do something or i will make the other person being discharged from his liability that is what i am trying to say when in case of default when one person makes a default in payment i will pay on his behalf that is the guarantee i am giving that will be a contract of guarantee right a contract of guarantee is a contract to perform the promise or discharge the liability of third person in case of his default a guarantee may be either oral or written that is not given that it should be uh, written only it can be oral as well right parties to a contract of guarantee there are three parties to a contract of guarantee one is called your debtor another one is called creditor and there is one more called as guarantor which is known as surety in case of guarantee in the legal language so the person to whom the guarantee is given is called the creditor simple it is simple to understand there are two person one who is supposed to make the payment to the other so the person who is supposed to make the payment is the creditor and the person who is supposed to receive the payment is debtor and the person who gives guarantee creditor is the one who is supposed to make the payment but in case creditor does not make the payment it will be the guarantor who will make the payment and this guarantor is nothing but your surety so the person to whom the guarantee is given now we, we are giving guarantee to this person is your creditor the person who gives the guarantee is called the surety and the person for whom the guarantee is given is called as debtor now maybe i i think i told you in the reverse order debtor means somebody now if you are my debtor means what you are my debtor means i am supposed to receive money from you right so who is supposed to receive the money debtor or creditor right if you are my creditor what does it mean it means i am supposed to make payment to you so here what happens is creditor is the one who is actually supposed to get the payment because you are my creditor that means i'm supposed to make a payment for you so i bring somebody who will give guarantee that if i am not paying this person will pay and this is some trustable person so this person is giving guarantee to whom to you or to me uh, i mean to me or to you it is giving guarantee to you and who are you you are a creditor so the person to whom the guarantee is given is creditor and for whom he is giving guarantee for me so i become the debtor and who is giving the guarantee is your guarantor and the other name for guarantor is surety simple enough to understand i believe these are the three parties for whom creditor to whom uh, for whom debtor to whom creditor and who that is your surety right now in a contract of guarantee there are three separate agreements now what are these three separate agreements one between the principal debtor and the creditor between you and me I am supposed to pay certain money to you that means there is a contract I owe something to you so there is an agreement between you and me the second between the creditor and the surety now I brought this person that he will pay if I'm not paying so he will pay there is a contract between you and him this person who is ready to pay to you so if there is a default there is a contract between you and this third person that is second contract and the third contract if he pays for me is he not going to collect the same money from me as well in case i'm not able to pay you on time then you will be asking this person who has already given a guarantee and in case he pays to you he will again come to me so there is a third contract first it was you and me then you and this third person and then this third person and me so three contracts one between the principal debtor and the creditor you and me the second between the creditor and the surety you and him and the third between the surety and the principal debtor him and me these are the three contracts right simple enough to understand now what are the different essentials of a contract of guarantee how do we say that you know contract of guarantee is there so these are the different essentials first it says triplicate agreement triplicate agreements means three agreements three agreements we already discussed one two three triplication of agreements so contract of guarantee is a triplicate agreement between the principal data creator and surety second consent of three parties all the three parties should agree i and you and me you should agree that this third person will pay this third person should agree that he will pay right and 
i should of course agree so all the three parties should agree if i'm not agreeing you are not agreeing or if he is not agreeing then it can't happen so all the three parties should agree that is what we are trying to say consent of three parties uh, this the, there must be consent of all the three parties right then maybe oral or written that is also there a contract of guarantee may be either oral or in writing whereas as per english law the con a guarantee must be in writing and signed by the party who offers guarantee so english law says that it should be in written but indian contract act allows to be in oral also but it is always suggested to be in written because oral things can be denied until and unless you can actually prove it but when it comes to written those cannot be denied because there are written documents there are written evidence to it right that is there then existence of liability what does it mean if there is no like existence of liability how are we saying who will pay and who will not pay right that is what we are trying to say there must be an existing liability or a promise whose performance is guaranteed and such liability must be enforceable by law yes if the liability is not enforceable by law we have already seen what is enforceable by law pause this video write it down make a note write one line about enforceability what is it just pause it i believe you have come back again that means you have written down the meaning of enforceability that was understood in the very first class i believe you remember if you don't go back to the first lecture you will understand what do we mean by enforceability so th there should be a liability liability means i owe something to you that is my liability and this liability is already in existence and this liability should be before something which is enforceable if i cannot go to the court i'll say that the, uh, uh, you can uh, if i'm not paying you can you go to the court that this guy you know he's not paying me ransomware can you go to this for this thing to the court no so it should be enforceable it should be something legal the uh, the exception to this rule is a guarantee given for minus debt that is something accepted i mean uh, not accepted but exception the minus debt is not enforceable by law yet the guarantee given for minus debt is valid yes sub minus guarantee is also valid i can always give guarantee for a minor that if this guy doesn't pay i will pay right but we understand what do we mean by minus contract i believe if not pause this video go back to the lecture i believe capacity of parties is the one where we have already seen dharmodas versus mohiri bibi yes do you remember write it down whatever you remember yes i believe you have come back next essentials of a valid contract every essentials of a valid contract should also be present in case of contract of guarantee contract of guarantee is a special contract but yes it is a contract so every essential of a contract would again apply to your guarantee also contract of guarantee as well right so all the essentials of a valid contract must be present in a contract of guarantee however the following points are worth noting in this regard the principal debtor need not be competent to contract and the surety would regard it as the principal debtor and would be personally liable to pay if in case principal debtor is not capable of paying if i am not and competent to enter into a contract with you that means if i am a minor and this third person is giving a guarantee that let's suppose this is my father who is giving a guarantee then this third person this guarantor or this surety can be treated as a principal debtor as well that is well and fine that is what we are trying to say right surety need not be benefited anything done or any promise made for the benefit of the principal debtor may be a sufficient consideration to the surety for giving the guarantee that is also there same goes for minor only something which is beneficial to you know uh, consideration to the surety for given the guarantee that is also there principal debtor is getting some kind of benefit right next guarantee need to be uh, not to be obtained by misrepresentation what if i fa i faked my identity i told this guy that my debt is only 10000 but my debt was 10 lakhs what is it misrepresentation i told this guy that i have bought something like let's suppose i have bought a fan from you but it happens that i have actually bought drugs what is it misrepresentation this would not accept this would not make a guarantee legal so any guarantee which has been obtained by means of misrepresentation made by or with his knowledge and assent concerning a material part of the transaction is invalid everything should be known to the surety everything should be known to every party there should not be any kind of misrepresentation even if i misrepresented to you something and then i brought this guy as a guarantor 
original contract itself would be misrepresentation that would not make a valid contract because the consideration was not free consent was not free sorry not consideration so if the consent is not free in the first place between you and me then this third guarantee which is a collateral uh, contract we can say it would also not stand in fourth because the original one itself was not valid so that would make it definitely void or whatever it is but it won't be valid right what it would be that also you have to tell me pause it write it down next it is the contract of guarantee must be supported by consideration what does it mean a contract of guarantee must have all the essentials of a valid contract it will be interesting to know that it is not necessary that there would be direct consideration between the surety and the creditor is there any consideration between surety and creditor the surety is giving guarantee for me right did you give him something no but still there is a contract between you and him he's just giving a guarantee for nothing if i'm not paying then he will pay so he he will be liable to pay to you without a consideration that is what we're trying to say consideration is something very essential no consideration no contract but here the contract is valid even without a consideration right uh, the law presumes that consideration received by the principal debtor is the sufficient consideration for the surety he is giving guarantee because i have received something from you that is of sufficient consideration we are trying to say right next the promise to pay must be conditional what is that condition it is another important essential element of a contract of guarantee there must be a conditional promise to be liable on the default of the principal debtor surety is not liable to pay until and unless there is a default by me by the principal debtor so surety becomes liable on one condition if the principal debtor defaults that is the very essential condition without which this won't be valid so in case the principal debtor is not making any default surety is not liable that is the condition right next there should be no concealment of fact again something mis something related to misrepresentation if something is being hidden that would also be considered as concealment of fact so the creditor should disclose to the surety the facts which are likely to affect the surety's liability the guarantee obtained by concealment of such fact is invalid like let's suppose in this original contract itself you are very much sure that i will not pay you know it you know in the fact that i don't have money to pay and this fact was you know hidden or concealed from this surety this guarantor so you already know that i won't be able to pay and you are making this guy just because a part of contract so that you get your debt cleared but you had an idea that would not be a valid guarantee because if something was concealed from the surety surety would not be liable to pay now something we have very interesting called kinds of guarantee now there are different categories there are different kinds of guarantee so let's just look into them one by one what do we mean by different kinds of guarantee or what are those different kinds of guarantee number one simple or specific guarantee simple guarantee means it is the one uh, in which guarantee is given for a single specific debt or transaction it comes to an end as soon as the liability under that transaction ends a specific guarantee once given is irrevocable it is something special that it is something specific it is something for a single transaction that if i am not able to pay you 10000 my surety will pay simple as soon as this 10000 is paid by me or him it is over if, if you receive for you it is over if he pay if i am paying it is over for all of us but if he is paying for you it is over but for me and for him it is yet there so it depends upon the circumstances but it was for only one single transaction that is your simple or specific guarantee so next is continuing guarantee continuing guarantee means it is a guarantee given for a series of transaction the guarantee which extends to a series of transaction is called as continuing guarantee a surety's liability continues until the revocation of the guarantee so this guarantee need not to be revoked because it was for only one transaction and as soon as one transaction is over it the guarantee also gets over but here the guarantee is continuing for some transactions so you have to revoke the surety has to revoke specifically that now my guarantee is over so because there are more than one transaction so for which transaction it is there and for which it is not it has to be revoked so a continuing guarantee may be given for a part of the entire debt or for the entire debt subject to a limit right that is always there you can put a condition that i am giving guarantee only for 50 percent of the transaction or i am giving guarantee only for 10,000, or i am giving guarantee for 50,000, 50 percent 50 or 10,000, whichever is lower 
so like that anyway in any possible way the guarantee can be given there can be always a limit that is what we are trying to say with the continuing guarantee because it is applying to many transactions how do we revoke now we are saying that continuing guarantee has to be revoked but how does it get revoked so one it is by nature of revocation it depends upon uh, how do we uh, what is the kind of uh, revocation nature next we are saying by death of surety if the surety dies who will give guarantee it gets over automatically third we are saying by modes of discharging the surety how do we discharge by novation then renovation means there is a new contract if there is a new contract automatically it, uh, the original one gets revoked the guarantee for the original one gets revoked now we are saying variance in terms of contract if any terms of contracts are being changed that will also revoke the guarantee now uh, we are saying a release or discharge of principal data if the principal data himself is discharged how would he discharge either breach by of either breach of contract or performance of contract either way if i am discharged from the liability my surety would also get discharged right next it is when the creditor enters into an uh, arrangement with the principal debtor now there is an arrangement between you and me that would also discharge a debtor that you arrange with me that you can pay in a few installments something like that some kind of alteration some kind of mutual understanding some kind of mutual agreement that would also discharge my surety right next it is creditors act or omission to imparting the surety's eventual uh, sorry eventual remedy or loss of security these are again loss of security is another way if the security itself there was something called as you know that this debt is secured by something and the security is lost surety would discharge and one is creditors act or omission imparting the surety's eventual remedy some kind of remedy my uh, surety was having but that remedy is gone that would also revoke his guarantee sorry yeah next it is guarantee for performance of a promise now there were two one was simple uh, single or simple or specific and then the second one was continuing third one is guarantee for performance of a promise when a person enters it uh, when a person enters into with another to do something but the promise gets doubt about the capacity of the promisor to perform he can ask him to bring a guarantor if you have a doubt that whether i will be perform whether i will be able to perform the contract or not you can always ask me to bring a guarantor that is my surety in such cases the surety becomes liable to do the work if the principal debtor fails it is called as guarantee for performance of a promise right it is not a debt but it is some kind of performance performance can be debt also but something beyond debt that is we are calling it as performance right but it should not be of personal nature next guarantee for discharge of liability when a person lends a loan to another but gets doubt about the intention of the borrower to repay the debt in time he can ask for a surety in such case the surety should repay the loan amount with interest if the principal later fails it is called as a guarantee for discharge of liability simple this is what we have been seeing for liability we are calling it as guarantee for liability for performance guarantee for performance and continuing or specific that can also be there next it is guarantee for honesty of an employee now what does it mean if some let's read it out sometimes an employer may get a doubt about the employee he had employed as to his honesty and take a guarantor such surety becomes liable to compensate the employer for any loss or damage caused by the employee on account of his dishonesty it is called as fidelity guarantee now if the, my organization if my hr gets a doubt that i don't uh, you know i'm not producing the original or sufficient documents or honest documents he can always ask for a guarantor that whether my documents are true or not so if somebody who knows that these are true that can be there so any loss happens because of dishonesty later on it happens to be that my documents were forged then because of that if a company is having any kind of loss that can be claimed by from my surety not because of any other ground right honesty is something you know uh, where you sometimes you can trust sometimes you cannot so you have to be very specific when it comes to guarantee for Uh, honesty right guarantee for honesty of employee next it is prospective guarantee now what is prospective guarantee prospective guarantee means guarantee for future so guarantee given for a present transaction is called as a prospective guarantee guarantee or uh, uh, guarantee all guarantees will be prospective so it is like a uh, generally sorry not guarantee uh, by seeing guarantee guarantee again and again it is only the guarantee which i am reading so generally all guarantees will be prospective so i am giving guarantee for this transaction for present transaction that is prospective if it continues it will be continuing and it will continue for the future transaction that is prospective but the opposite of prospective is 
retrospective retrospective means guarantee for past transaction so a guarantee given in respect of a past transaction is called retrospective guarantee such guarantees are taken with the original surety dies or becomes in uh, insane or insolvent so my i gave you one example you are my creator i'm uh, like yeah, i'm the principal leader you are my creator and i brought a surety now if the surety dies that means you will ask for another surety so if i bring another surety this another surety is giving guarantee for something that has already happened so it is a retrospective guarantee guarantee for the past that is something called as a retrospective guarantee right next it is rights of surety but that we will be look into in our next class because this is going to be too much for you in just one class so there are different rights for surety how what are the things that a surety gets and what are the things that a surety does not get but it is a little bit in detail so we will look into our next class